This video is brought to you by AppSumo, the leading digital marketplace for entrepreneurs. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. This episode is going to be a short one. My apartment flooded last week, so sorting all of that out took some time, and production has slowed as a result. The smartphone industry is massive. Each and every year, the revenue from smartphone sales is about 400 billion US dollars, and over a billion units are sold each year. Google, who owns the Android ecosystem, is taking a page out of Apple's handbook. They're going to be designing their own in-house smartphone chip. It will debut in Google's upcoming Pixel 6 smartphone later this year. Later on in the episode, we'll take a look at how new Google research is using AI to design computer chips in just a few hours, whereas a human expert would have taken months. It's pretty interesting. So let's take a look. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Most Android phones, including Google's own Pixel line, have relied on the chip designer Qualcomm. For clarity's sake, Qualcomm, an American company, designs the chips, but the chips themselves are actually built by Samsung and TSMC. The latest move from Google looks to remove itself from Qualcomm completely. The new in-house processor, codenamed Google Silicon 101, or otherwise known as Whitechapel, will power Google's upcoming phones as mentioned, but is also expected to feature in future Chromebooks. Samsung has teamed up with Google to build their custom chip. And this makes sense, as they already build chips for Qualcomm, but also use their own custom chips in their smartphones sold outside the US. These Samsung chips are known as the Exynos series. Google CEO Sundar Pichai stated that Google planned to seed more investment into hardware. But as it stands, Google hasn't invested enough in their semiconductor business to be competitive just yet. Although, they're choosing to hone their focus in an area where they can obtain a competitive advantage against the major players. And this area is AI. Google is already good at using AI to enhance image quality. The camera hardware on their phones hasn't been updated in years, but manages to keep up with the competition solely thanks to the AI within their software. A chip with a focus on AI hardware acceleration could lead to even better photos. Using machine learning, improved color science, image stabilization, and even audio processing is all possible. A report from Axios mentions, the Whitechapel chip will have a dedicated area for Google Assistant processing. This is to improve performance and always-on capabilities. With Google's Lambda coming on the software side, this could be interesting. For those of you who don't know, Google Lambda is going to incorporate the latest in AI language processing so the Google Assistant can understand context and have conversations with its users. Here's an example. Today, I'm excited to share our latest breakthrough in natural language understanding, Lambda. It's designed to converse on any topic. Let's listen to a conversation the team had with Pluto a few days ago. I'm so curious about you. I sense your excitement. Ask me anything. Tell me what I would see if I visited. You would get to see a massive canyon, some frozen icebergs, geysers, and some craters. Hey, I was wondering, have you ever had any visitors? Yes, I have had some. The most notable was New Horizons, the spacecraft that visited me. That must have been exciting. The team that created New Horizons was very excited to see me. I also sent them back a picture of myself since I had not been seen up close before. That's so great. What else do you wish people knew about you? I wish people knew that I am not just a random ice ball. I am actually a beautiful planet. Thanks for talking with me. Anytime, I am always open for people to chat. I hope you have a great day. Because none of the responses were predefined, and Lambda is able to carry a conversation no matter what we talk about. Lambda plus custom hardware could make for a next level AI assistant, potentially even offline. So why do this in the first place? One of the biggest advantages of building an in-house chip over buying an external one off the shelf is the tight integration between software and hardware. The software knows exactly what it's going to be working with, so it can be more efficient. This should improve the end user's experience. In the earlier days of smartphones, heavy optimization from Apple, controlling both the software and hardware, allowed the iPhone to operate smoothly and provide an arguably better user experience, despite being woefully underpowered and limited in features compared to the competition of the time. Another benefit of Google building their own chips is a reduction in production cost. Now, instead of acquiring processes from external providers like Qualcomm, who themselves need to make a profit, 
Google can design the chips themselves, and if they choose, they can use the money saved to either cut down costs or use the money to improve other areas of the phone. So, what can we expect from Google's upcoming Whitechapel chip? Google's decision to separate from Qualcomm is an interesting one, because it's actually going to look like there's going to be a performance drop when compared to the best that Qualcomm has to offer. The new Whitechapel chip is going to be behind Apple's A14 Bionic, the Snapdragon 888, and definitely not to mention the M1. According to WCCF Tech, we know from the internal documents and other leaks that the Whitechapel chip will have an 8-core ARM design with three clusters, much like the Samsung Exynos 2100. And while efficient compared to the company's previous manufacturing techniques, the Google chip will most certainly be a step behind the competition. 9 to 5 Google states that the predicted performance will be similar to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765, already used in the Pixel 5. To the layman, this just means that the Google chip will have middle-of-the-road performance. Interestingly, according to the Economic Times, a team of Google researchers are working on an AI model that allows chip design to be performed by artificial intelligence. The new AI method utilizes past experience to become better and faster at solving new instances of the problem. The Google team writes in the paper for the scientific journal, Nature, quote, our method was used to design the next generation of Google's artificial intelligence accelerators and has the potential to save thousands of hours of human effort for each new generation. According to the team, in about six hours, the model could generate a design that optimizes the placement of different components on the chip. Quote, in under six hours, our method automatically generates chip floor plans that are superior or comparable to those produced by humans in all key metrics, including power consumption, performance, and chip area. To achieve this, the Google team used a dataset of 10,000 chip layouts for a machine learning model, which was then trained with reinforcement learning. Anna Goldie, research scientist at Google Brain, explains, quote, our reinforcement learning agents generates chip layouts in just a few hours, whereas human experts can take months. Despite many decades and a mature industry, chip design has resisted automation, requiring months of intense effort by physical design engineers to produce manufacturable layouts. So this latest development, only published last month, is extremely interesting. So we're going to have to wait and see if Google will make up for lost time by using AI in their upcoming chip designs. It's also important to note that with the global semiconductor chip shortage, Google might have a tough time actually getting these chips built. And if you want to learn more on the shortage and what exactly is being affected, you can check out my video on that. Also, if you're one of those people who are wary of Google, would you trust them designing their own chip for their smartphones? Are you concerned about security issues such as backdoors? Feel free to discuss in the comment section below. I just want to thank today's sponsor, AppSumo. As creators and entrepreneurs, we wear a lot of hats. Social media, project management, sales, accounting, copywriting, web development, and the list goes on. AppSumo wants to make your life easier. As the leading digital marketplace for entrepreneurs, AppSumo is the best way to automate all the tasks that come with running a business. I just picked up this AI writing tool called Writer. It's normally $600, but I got it for under $40. It allows you to auto-write heaps of stuff with just a few keywords. I thought to try it out for a YouTube description and title, just to see what it did. And it does work, and I think it's a great seed for creativity that you can build off. You can also use it for blogs, emails, business pitches, even social media, and much more. I actually personally do think it's cool to see AI language processing being used in such a natural way. As a special bonus to the channel, AppSumo is giving $20 in free credits to the first 500 people who click the link in the description. Okay, so that's it from me. Thanks for watching. If you've just arrived at this channel and want to see anything on science, technology, business or history, feel free to subscribe to Cold Fusion. My name is Dagogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.